uh, we are very pleased to share with you our transformation journey. Okay, so Sorry, a little bit hiccup. Thanks God. Thanks God. Sorry for the hiccup. Okay, so as a standard protocol, <laughs> today I'll first share with you guys on Delta overview. Okay, a slight introduction of who Delta is. Then we will talk about the bigger topic on manufacturing trends and challenges. And then we will talk about how Delta managed to transform our high mix low volume. And finally, some takeaways. Okay. So as a start, Delta is actually founded in 1971. Our founder, Mr. Bruce Chen, and our chairman, Mr. Yen Si Hai. So we are the world leader in switching power supplies and DC brushless plants. So as of last year, we are our re total revenue is at nine billion US dollar. Basically, Delta business categories is in three groups: power electronics, automation, and infrastructure. So today we will be focusing on automation under industrial automation, that is smart manufacturing. Okay, let's, let's take a look at what is currently the global trend because everybody is talking about Industry 4.0 and we have made in China, we have made in India, you know, there's a lot of trend going on at this moment. So I think, first of all, we need to get to know exactly what is 3.0 first, I think. Because there seems to be a mix up between 3.0 and 4.0, okay? 3.0 is actually more about digitization and automation. And when you go to 4.0, it's really about how to make use of all the intelligence to make it more flexible. I think that is the key of 4.0. How, how do we use intelligence? There are a lot of global initiatives at the moment when we talk about IoT, Industry 4.0, Internet of Things, you know. So from US, so from US, Germany, India, China, and then even Singapore, Singapore Japan, Thailand, you know, everyone has their own 4.0. Okay, so what is the challenges of our manufacturing at this point? Faster hardware innovation. Nowadays, consumer electronics, all types of electronics, the life cycle is getting shorter and shorter. Customization. This is where people start to talk about manufacturing in demand, right? And last but not least, localization. When you want to sell your products, you need to make your products there. This is localization. Another common issue that I think everyone is facing in manufacturing is increasing labor costs. Shortage of labors. This is one of the key pain points of all manufacturers. The other thing is retention. How do we make our job more interesting so that we can keep our workforce and don't have so much attrition? Okay? Last but not least, 
definitely green. Everyone is talking about carbon emission, so we have a lot of new different standards in environmental protection. Right. And this all adds up to cost. So for Delta, we embark on this journey coming to 10 years. Okay, we are OEM, we make electronics products, we have a lot of factories all around the world. But we face a common problem as a lot of manufacturers in consumer electronics. So in Delta, when we started to embark on this journey, these are the four elements or the steps of approach that we took towards smart manufacturing. First of all, simplification. How do we simplify our process? How do we standardize our process? Not only process, also product. From this simplification and standardization, we look at how do we automate. And this automation that we are talking about is really about how can we scale. Next, digitalization. With all this automation that we have, how do we get all the data and make sure that this is useful data, you know. It's not only data, useful data. And finally, using this data itself to build the intelligence for smart manufacturing. So before our deployment, we came up with a scope in such a way, starting from product design, okay? Product design, then we look at design for automation, and then Moving on to smart equipment. I will elaborate more on smart equipment itself. Why do we want to put smart here? Okay. Then we talk about production planning, manufacturing execution, analysis, factory monitoring, energy management. So as a start, digital factory solution for design for automation itself. These are the three key criteria that we actually went through a lot of exercise. For example, product standardization. How do we standardize the product at the product level? For example, if let's say we talk about electronics on the board level itself, there are so many different types of components. If let's say we do not do standardization, what is going to happen? We are going to have a lot of insertion machine that need to insert a lot of different types of components. And with that, we will have a lot of conversion. Process standardization, that means different SKU of product that we run, we make sure that we standardize the process so that the process itself does not differ too much from one process to the other one. Equipment standardization. You know, equipment itself is actually, you know, a capital investment. So as a manufacturer ourselves, we hope that our equipment itself is scalable, reusable. So this is very important thing for us because ROI itself typically is long. So we need to make sure that we use all the equipment from one production line to the other that needs to be standardized. And finally, simulation. You know, with all the robotics software, simulation, CAD software in the market at this moment, there is a lot of simulation program that we can test even before we manufacture. Okay, so Delta start to adopt in terms of this, and we develop our own robotic simulation program. Okay. Next, we talk about smart equipment. These are the range of equipment that we build for our electronics backend assembly. Anything from glue spraying all the way to deep paneling. But as what I emphasize, the word smart. Why smart? Traditionally, all this process, as long as you can do a soldering, is good enough. You can do a uh, dispensing is good enough, but now it's not good enough. So when we develop our smart equipment, these are the smart functions that we really look at. How do we do auto calibration? Because for high mix low volume, we cannot down the line. We need to have continuous production of the line. So we need to have auto calibration so that we don't have interference to our normal production. Auto conversion, this is something that is especially important when you're de dealing with different kind of SKU. Why? Because traditionally what we do is that if there is a, if there is a new product, 
we will need our technician to go to the line to go and select the program pre-save and then to go and make the changes one by one with auto conversion that means whatever recipe that we got from PLM we can directly download to the mass and from the mass we can do real-time conversion predictive predictive maintenance is really about sensors but we have to be very specific if we start to put sensors here and where everywhere then it's not going to make sense cost effectively so it's really about which are the critical components going to affect your quality your utilization so these are the areas that we need to have that kind of predictive mode machine learning machine learning at this moment when we embark on machine learning we are focusing on VI and AOI okay I think for VI and AOI, why VI and AOI? Typically, if let's say we talk about inspecting certain products, we will realize that there is some overkill here and there. And this overkill itself is affecting our yield also. So with machine learning in position with the algorithm itself, we are able to capture a lot of image, save it, and then running an algorithm on it. Okay? End to end. All this machine is built from Delta. But there are some of these machines that is not built from Delta because we are not the expert. So in order to have all the machine having the connect communication, we need a standardized interface and protocol. This is very important. Without this, data collection is not possible. Okay? So next we will do we will jump to production planning and manufacturing execution. So typically with all this order management, equipment management, manpower, material, we need we definitely will need a system. Okay? So manufacturing execution system is important for the correct execution of the work orders itself, as well as to do real-time production planning. Okay? So we have an, an enhancement here that we actually link up with our warehouse management system that we will since this is a high mix low volume, so in real time we need to have the materials to the line. So we cannot rely on what we call the water spiders or, or operators that push the car. They will not be real time. You know? So we have what we call the warehouse management system and to link up with third party uh, AGVs or AMRs to deliver the materials as per the MES. So, MES itself is one big system. Just imagine MES, if let's say we talk about front end and back end itself, if we start to collect process data, the MES will be heavily loaded. Because at one time, a lot of equipment is sending info across and getting info back. So initially when we implement the MES on our smart production line, we encountered this issue and there was a lack, there's a latency in the signals. So eventually we developed what we call a block control system. So just imagine in the SMT line, if let's say we have 30 processors. Some of the processors are correlated. So in order to prevent latency and in order to have some edge computing power, we categorize some of the modules into this block itself Imagine 30 machines to one MES and four blocks to one MES. Definitely, this is going to be faster. So this is what we have done beside MES itself. So next data analysis. So after we have all this information from all these various systems, there is a lot of data. But how did it useful? It really depends on what intelligence we want to give it. So with this, we realize that, okay, what, are, what is our pain point? You know? From there, we start to come up with our own five steps data analysis. Starting from collection. Collection is no longer only just to collect. We need to structure it. You need to structure it to a common language, a common format. Then you have single item analysis. This is basic analysis. Then coming to multiple item diagnostic. That means a combination of single item. And then able to do predictive. Able to conduct predictive. And then using this predictive info to do intelligence. 
So over here, I will give you a, a simple example of the algorithm that we run on one of the cases. Okay, so what we have is that we have an object. This is an encoder product. So typically, an encoder product for this line, we have a 100% pass rate. Okay. However, we realize that the CPK is so low. We don't know what exactly is the problem. So if let's say, uh, based on a traditional way of doing, typically what we need to do is to get hold of all this product and then get an engineer to go and draft out and go and calculate this and that, you know, and it's going to take a lot of time. And of course, that is going to be prone to error or something. So for Delta itself, through our algorithm, we do an auto root cause analysis of all these products right. in the line. That means we get all the data from the mass. And from this, we are able to segregate that for this lot of object, there are two distinctive group of product. Oh, no, two distinctive, uh, distinctive group of uh, components within it. And from this component, a deeper diagnosis on it, we realize that for technical people, for technical guys over here, there is a very distinct pattern in terms of A itself is actually segregated here and the black dots itself is actually segregated here. So, as you can see, based on the SPC itself, A itself is not a good CBK, right? Black itself is more of a better stable CBK. So, if we run this diagnostic Eventually, we're going to get an intelligence out of this. And this intelligence is not created by human. It is through the system itself. We are able to pinpoint saying that who is A vendor, who is B vendor. And if let's say we omit A vendor, what kind of CPK are we going to get from B? So this will help the decision maker in terms of making sense of this encoder product itself. How do we improve the quality of this product? Okay? So. Next is on factory monitoring and energy management system. So, so before I start on this uh, energy management system, I think it's good to give you an overview of the Delta effort in energy itself. In fact, we are one of the Dow Jones Sustainability Index member. Okay, so we have been actively participating in all this uh, Dow Jones Sustainability Index performance indicator program, and actually. From 1 0 to 1 8, in fact, we have using our product itself on our client, we have actually saved 28 billion kilowatt hour of electricity. And carbon emission is 15 million ton. And we have implemented more than 1,800 energy saving solutions. Over the world, we have around 20 uh, green certified factories and buildings. Okay? So, with this background itself, Definitely for our smart green factory itself, we need we would definitely have this suite of solution where we monitor all the high back system, the compressor, the circulation, the cooling towers, all this. And then with this, of course, we have to perform a data analysis. And this analysis data are all from the previous uh, monitoring sensors, equipment, all that. Okay. So, once we have done design for automation, smart equipment, production planning, MES, data analysis, factory monitoring, energy management, what is the end result that we got? I think some of you might have seen our PLC that is fixed on one of the wall. So, I'm going to give you an example of the PLC production smart factory line that we, we actually built. Okay? This is a box built line. The SKU that we are talking about is 138 models. And out of this, 93% of the orders is less than 300 pieces. We are doing a conversion of 15 per day. So imagine, typically, if you're going to do that, that means we need to have a bunch of technicians on standby and changing all this tooling here and there, setting up the program, putting up the right materials, all that. It, it is not an easy task. So through our entire smart manufacturing of this line itself, in fact, we improve our labor productivity by three times. 
capacity we have increased by 70%. That means we compared to the existing capacity with this transformation, we achieved an upgrade of 70%. Production area we have actually reduced by 35%. And of course, with all this clo closed loop monitoring itself and the data that we have collected, we are able to better control our quality. Not only getting it passed, but passed with a very high CPG. Last but not least, labor force. I think labor force is very important. That's what I mentioned to some of the uh, friends that talked to me. Since we have a shortage of labor, the most obvious choice is to upskill our labor. And they will be more interested to do this, to walk this journey with you guys. And that is what Delta do. And with this, we actually have this entire... It's not really on the automation itself. It's actually on the software and the algorithm that is hiding within all these machines that you see. So, today's presentation is a little bit short. I can't play any video for you guys, but I encourage you guys to take a look. Do a search YouTube. Search for Delta Smart Manufacturing. There is a lot of real-life examples there. Okay, I think you all can have a better visualization of what we have done. Last but not least, the takeaways. I think this is important. So what is the key elements of Hemix low volume transformation? First of all, we need to have a flexible production line. That means a line that is adaptable, adoptable, and it should be real time recipe change. You need to have a reliable mass, okay? A reliable mass that is able to connect up with your ERP, your PLM, and link it up to the OT layer. Third, IT and OT integration. I think this is the most basic towards smart manufacturing. Without IT, OT integration, all the equipment speaking the same language, having the same kinds of protocols and interface, there's no way we can build a smart manufacturing. Last but not least, human-centric. As we move along this journey, Delta brought along our, lab, our, our entire workforce. That means, you know, with all this equipment, just imagine all this equipment previously was handled by manual operator. So with all this full automation, all the software involved, where are you going to find the labels? Are you going to recruit a new one? Yes, you can, but are they adept? Do they know your company? Do they know the product that they manufacture? You will be surprised. The operator, in fact, is a better technician. <laughs> and with Delta experience, finding the right partner is critically important. Provided you would like to embark on this journey by yourself, but with Delta, we have the domain knowledge. We have worked in various industries with different industries specific from electronics, computers, automotive, metal, rubber, plastic. We have all this domain knowledge. Domain knowledge is critical for transformation. One stop. We are really a one stop solution provider for smart manufacturing. Because why? We have the hardware layers where we talk about components, we talk about automation, we talk about equipment, we know about how to build smart equipment, we know what are the functions that is needed, to the sensing layer, to the manufacturing software, and finally, how do we do analytics? We have the algorithm, but as what I always share with my friends and my customers is that analysis is double way. We need to work very closely with the customers because only they themselves know where they feel the pain. Okay? And last but not least, we have experience in integration and total solution. So far, we have around 50 success cases in building up automation uh, digital factory. Devices that we connect, equipments that we connected are more than 20,000 sets. So, we have around 20 global plants and with all, the, all these plants and all this learning and all this experience, we actually can provide a lot of real-time 
experience towards your transformation. And finally, together, we believe that we can help you to transform your factory to a smarter and greener manufacturing site. Thank you. So, is there any question from the audience? Is M2M open source? M2M open source. If let's say we are talking about legacy machines, then we have to take a look at what is the brand of the controllers itself. But if we are talking about new machines, right, then we, in Delta context, we are also starting to adopt all the standards, like for example, Hermes standards for SMTs, OPC UA, you know. We are also trying to work for new machines along that line itself. Because at this moment, legacy machine, I think, is still a big issue. We have different type of protocol, different types of communication platform, different type of interface, you know. To get all this together, we need to have more close partnership. I hope I answer your question. Okay. So, any other questions? Talking about the Delta block, so Delta block versus the MPS. Mm. So what is the bandwidth limitation? How many MPS can support in one? Oh, okay. So, just imagine, MASS itself is an execution system, right? It's not an edge. Last time, what MASS do is to collect data for execution only. That means it do traceability. It track your UPH, your OE, all that. But nowadays, when we talk about collection of data, we are really talking about process data. Let's collect the process data of, for example, insertion. What is the insertion success rate like for a particular component? So, just imagine every hour, how many components are we inserting for SMT? How much data are we collecting? If you are throwing this data into mass, then you are going to interfere directly with the execution system. So that is where the birth of block control comes in, where you do edge computing. That means you can collect the SMT on the edge, do your analysis on the edge, and only throw up the data that is required for mass to execute. You see where I'm coming from? So, we, because initially we also adopt mass, but we, we really have a hard time also. Because we realize that we have a lot of logs. In terms of logs, meets up. Okay? We have a lot of latency. That means it doesn't seem very real time. Then after that, we start to investigate and found that no, it's not working this way. Because at one time, traffic is too heavy. So putting up a mess for your company, you all need to consider how much data you all want to move it through. If you don't have edge computing, then it's going to be an issue. Because practically mass is on site, it's not on the cloud. Okay, thanks Eli. Okay, anyone have any more questions? Okay, if not, thank you everyone for your time. Right.